The spine is literally the backbone of the body. It holds the torso together and moves it around. Hey there, I'm Stan Prokopenko. You're watching Proko. We're gonna start our study of the skeleton with the spine. The spine is the connection between the three major masses the head, the rib cage, and pelvis. And it's wedged between two butt cheeks. When constructing the figure, it's common to start with these three masses before adding the limbs. Remember how in the figure drawing course, we used the bean and the robo bean to quickly establish the torso? The bean was a simple way of establishing the gesture of the torso using simple shapes. The robo bean added more structure to the bean to describe its orientation in space. We can't even see the spine. Why do we study it? Here's the deal with the spine. Ooh. It places the rib cage, the oh. pelvis, and the skull wherever they happen to be. And they can't go anywhere the spine doesn't let them. They inherit the spine's limitations. If we want to construct the torso in any pose, we need to understand the spine. Let's do it. Big structure of the spine. The spine is strong enough to support the weight of the upper body, yet flexible enough to move. It's composed of 24 individual vertebrae, hard bones that give the spine its strength. The vertebrae have flexible cartilaginous discs between them that allow the spine to move as a single line. Each plane moves only a little, but they add up to a lot like a string of beads. Every little movement contributes to a graceful curve. There are four sections to the spine. The cervical section of the neck consists of seven vertebrae. The thoracic section of the rib cage has 12 vertebrae, one for each rib. The lumbar section of the lower back has five vertebrae. The fourth section is technically considered as two separate sections, but I'm gonna combine them the sacrum, and coccyx, which is the tailbone. The sections give the spine a four-arch curve. If the spine were a straight line, it would be strong, but rigid. This four-arch curve gives better flexibility for shock absorption and aids in balance, and it's the framework for the posture of the body. The cervical curve is the least curvy. It's almost a straight line but it does have a very subtle forward curve. The thoracic curve is longest and more curvy than the cervical section. It curves backward and aligns with the shape of the rib cage. The lumbar section curves forward and is even more curvy. The sacral curve is the most curvy of all the sections. So as you can see, the curves get progressively curvier as they go down the spine common structure of the vertebrae. The vertebrae of each section have slightly different structures, some for strength, some for flexibility. However, all the vertebrae share the same common components. Each has a thick disc-like body, which connects to the neighboring vertebra with a squishy little pillow, forming the main joint of the spine. On the back of the body is a U-shaped arch, creating a hole through which the spinal cord runs. This locks the fragile spinal cord inside and provides protection. On this arch are a few processes, little spikes that stick out like needles on a porcupine. A spinous process points out posteriorly. The subcutaneous tip is the only part of the vertebrae that makes an appearance on the surface of the body. The shape and angle of the spinous process changes as we move down the spine. The cervical spinous process fans out like a lobster tail. Thoracic is like a long spike. And the lumbar is like the blade of an ax. But these shapes are not observable on the surface. We can only observe that the thoracic are pointy and the lumbar are longer. The first six cervical aren't visible at all. Those are deeper in the neck, covered by the nuchal ligament. The first visible vertebra is the seventh cervical which is considered a major landmark of the body. 
This is the most pronounced and clearly visible vertebra along the spine, seen right in the middle of this diamond shape between the trapezius muscle. The middle vertebra of the thoracic section are usually not visible, even during an extreme forward lean, when the back muscles are stretched. But this varies. Sometimes you'll see all the thoracic and lumbar vertebrae. Motion. What the spine does affects the entire torso. The thoracic section leans back, and the sacral leans forward. Since the rib cage and pelvis attach to the spine, they inherit this lean. So this is the default position, not this. From there, each section has its own range of motion. The lumbar section has the largest and strongest vertebrae of the spine. It takes on the responsibility of holding all the weight of the upper body. The main motion of the lumbar area is flexion and extension, especially flexion, which is forward bending. When you bend down to touch your toes, most of that bending happens at the lumbar region. The lumbar region is also able to bend side to side, mostly at the top three lumbar vertebrae, because the bottom two are connected to the sacrum by strong ligaments. Rotation is restricted in the lumbar region. The thoracic vertebrae are not as large or strong as the lumbar, so you'd think they'd be more flexible. But you'd be wrong. The interlocking structure of the vertebrae and the fact that they're attached to the rib cage keep the thoracic section relatively still. Flexion, extension, and lateral bending are very minimal. However, the thoracic section is able to rotate. Rotation is the main motion of the thoracic section. The cervical spine is the thinnest and most delicate, so this allows for more flexibility in the neck. Rotation along all three axes is possible. Flexion, extension, lateral bending, and rotation. The first two vertebrae of the cervical section are unique, the atlas and axis. The axis has a vertical cylindrical process inserting into the atlas. Can you guess what kind of joint that creates? You guessed it, a pivot joint. 50% of cervical rotation is at the joint where the atlas meets the axis. 50% of cervical flexion and extension is at the joint where the atlas meets the skull. So the head can rotate side to side and up and down without much help from the rest of the neck. But the head can't bend laterally. The neck does that. Instead of drawing this, you would draw this. Let's review. The cervical section is somewhat separate from the rest of the spine. It moves the head around and has a lot of freedom to move in all directions. The thoracic and lumbar sections are more limited and have to work together. The thoracic takes care of most rotation and lumbar takes care of flexion, extension, and lateral bending. Drawing the spine. Okay, all that information is great and all, but how do you actually draw this stuff? How does this apply to drawing the figure? I'll show you in the next video. Keep your eyes out for that. That's it, thanks for watching. If you're posting your drawings, use hashtag Proco. And don't forget to follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Also, check out the Anatomy for Artists group on Facebook at facebook.com slash groups slash anatomy for artists. If you like this video, share it with your friends. And if you want to be updated about new videos, click this button to subscribe to the Proco newsletter. Okay. <laughs> That's a
the line again? <laughs> Can you just say the line? <laughs> okay, hold on, let's get serious. Why are you biting your finger? I'm waiting. Okay, okay, okay. I want to do this. Can't even see the spine. <laughs> what? Wow. Can't even see the spine. Why do we study it? That's good. 